very good afternoon to everybody. My name is Anirban Mukherjee, and uh, today I'll be speaking on free action society. Are we really free? So uh, the topic for this seminar was uh, research methods in humanities and social science. So we have heard about quite a number of methods, and I would like to start by asking a question: Why do we have so many methods in social science research? You will notice that this word science and social science obviously come from the study of natural sciences, and obviously we have borrowed methodologies. And I say the word methodologies with a hint of caution, comes from science, which has a very unified method of treating anything they decide to study. It starts with a hypothesis, ends with a conclusion, and in between you have experimentation, observation, testing, and so on and so forth. So why do we have so many methods? We have so many methods because society is not like nature. Society changes based on the way we decide to approach it. And society is formed primarily by individuals. These individuals take actions. These actions happen to be something which, is, which are called free actions. And it is this free actions which, because there are so many individuals and there are so many free actions in society, that we have so many different methods of studying social sciences or societies, so to say. So, to understand research methods in social sciences, we have to understand what exactly is meant by free action in society. I will start with my position in this paper, which is that free action is, a, is an interdependent, limited, and determined act due to our human circumstances in society. Its conception is internal to society and discursive <coughs> in nature. Before I can talk about free action, I have to talk about where the notion of free action comes from. It comes from a very famous debate in philosophy, because I'm a philosopher, determinism and free will. So I'll start with that. Then I'll talk about what it means to actually be free and what is the notion of free action in society. Then I'll go on to show how it is society is an internal relation between us and action is a discursive idea. So before I go into details, let's start at the very beginning. What is determinism? What is free will? Determinism says that there is complete causal disorder. Like, for example, if I were to drop something, it would fall. There's a causal order. Why? Because it's gravity. I drop some, I let something go in the air because of gravity, which is the cause. That thing falls. Cause and effect. But determinism says that human actions are already predetermined. We work in some sort of, you know, like, they're not saying everything is predetermined and written down by an unseen God. No. They're saying that whatever human beings do have its genesis in a, in a cause. For example, the effect. I'm speaking here today. Why? Because the cause. There's a seminar. So the complete causal order refers to laws of nature, but in terms of society, it would also mean laws of society, or the necessary relation uh, and the and refers to the necessary relation between cause and effect. But does this mean we are not free? No, we are free because we can choose even in this determined order. So uh, that can be exemplified by taking recourse to J. S. Mill. Uh, but before that, let's talk about determinism. It's very interesting to note that Marx talks about determinism in the entirety of his thesis where he expounds on economic, you know, economic law. So he says, Mark opines that individuals in the social life enter into relations of production due to interplay of forces in society. And the totality of these relations determines the economic structure of the real foundation of society, which in turn determines the superstructure of the society. The superstructure is responsible for social consciousness and the social being of, or positioning of man determines the consciousness of actions. For example, Revolutions happen when there's a conflict between the forces and relations of production. So what are the forces of production? Some of the forces of production, for example, would be, you know, you have the capitalist mode of production, you have the communist mode of production, and so on. And who produces? That is the individuals produce. So whenever there's a conflict, we have revolutions. For example, the societal structure, which would develop independently of such actions generated by them. Like, for example, Marx, so basically Marx uh, like is it more or less his works on which talk about all the superstructure and the real structure of society? It says three things about ontology, methodology, and epistemologically. Ontologically, it claims that relations and forces of production, the economic structure of society, and its superstructure are all real things. They may not be tangible, but they're definitely real because we can feel their cause and effect in our everyday lives. And the cause of revolutions, for example, is a conflict and determines the agent's consciousness and presumably their actions. But what does it mean methodologically? It means that the Marsh's method is unitary, precise, and derived from natural sciences. It's also what is called a top-down approach. 
and this emphasizes the material conditions and is naturalistic or causal in nature and seeks to commit itself to a single notion of explanation. It's a grand narrative. But grand narratives have their issues, which we'll visit shortly. And also he makes certain epistemological claims. Now Marx is not an epistemologist by any standard, but his works <coughs> in its from its methodology and its ontology does imply a certain epistemology. And the epistemological claim is the social being of man determines his consciousness. Now you have two more minutes. After five minutes, I will tell you any paper presentation. Sure. Mm -hmm. you have seven minutes. After five minutes, I will tell you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so Marx is a determinist. But what is the critique of Marx? That's Jay Smill or or it can be said the positive method or uh, so our liberal method. So Mill uh, believes in open society, individuality, critical thinking, rationality. For him, social sciences is grounded in laws of individual human nature and has as its subject matter the actions and passions of man in a social state which are subject to aforementioned laws of the human nature. And what are these laws of human nature? The laws of the mind, the laws of formation of character. Because according to Mill, that whatever we think, we think even to certain rules, certain laws, which are embedded in our character, which is not very surprising. I can give examples on the top of the head. For example, the law of identity, for example. A is always equal to A and never to B. It's the law of identity. Or the law of excluded middle, where it says that if something is true, it is true and it cannot be false at the same time. So we need to, we, we, impl we, ha we think in accordance with these rules. And, uh, so the aim of social science aims to find such rules and attempts to explain and predict the whole history of society. And now, here we come to the contrast and critique of M Marx. Mill asserts only the existence of individuals and their actions which make up the structure of society. He doesn't say the structure exists and therefore individuals exist. He says the other thing. No? He says individuals make structure. Methodologically, he traces the regularities in human behavior to the sources in human nature. Please sum up that. I've just started my paper, so if you would like, then I can like go. But see, I think the time given was seven minutes. So just it was given seven minutes. The people who presented before me, I think there are quite a number of people, and I think I'm one of the three speakers today. Oh, five. One of five. So there are seven speakers. So th uh, that's the only way to keep my time. That thirty minutes was given to him, and then seven minutes to comes to sixty-five minutes. Since people started twenty minutes late. That's the if, you want, I I if you want, I can finish my paper. If you want, I can finish my paper. No problem. We have time. Thank you. No. If you do not have time, like, if that is what it is, hmm. then that is what it is. 4.30 to come. We don't do that. We have time. See, the, the time giving was the issue.